This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for How to Super Age with Elise Collins. And this is being brought to you by the book. Want to hold up your book? Super Ager. And we're going to actually talk about your book today, um, how it's going to help us just get through the next couple of weeks, holiday time, when um, we seem to forget to do all the good things that we're supposed to do for ourselves. Yeah, exactly, Karen. I wanted to just do a little refresher for uh, the, the listeners that have read my book. And if you haven't read my book, you can get it. If you don't have time to read my book during the holidays, you can listen to the audio book. My new supervisor in my current job is listening to the book with his wife every night. And they, so it's fun because every time I talk to him, he goes, we're doing this, we're doing that. My wife is doing everything. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think she does everything and <laughs> he's following along, but it's a lot of fun. So you don't even have to read it if you're, if you're busy, because it can be a busy time of year. So yeah, I just wanted to help our listeners think about the easiest way to weave in uh, super ager tips and tricks, not spending a lot of money. Cause I know for me, I want to, I love giving gifts, maybe, maybe even giving gifts to yourself. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. It's a fun time of year. So um, how do we make time for ourselves? How do we make sure that we get what we need during the season? Well, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing this week on the on our website. And one of the things that I've been talking about is appreciation. And we tend to appreciate what others are doing, but we tend to forget ourselves. We get so wrapped up in everything. And it starts way before Christmas. It starts before Thanksgiving, because we start thinking about what are all the things that we want to do? And I know for myself, it's taken me a couple of years to realize that I can do some of those extras, but I don't have to do all of them. And I and I think, you know, as we talk about this today, I think our listeners are going to hear that, yeah, you know, what foods can I eat during the holidays? So why don't we just start there because the holidays are filled with tempting foods and candies and everything else so can we just sit down and eat like everybody else yeah <laughs> that's a great question well here's a couple of tips um for for eating you know our bodies um are optimized to digest earlier in the day so this is all i'm, I'm trying to give you outside of the box advice too, because there's a lot of advice that I hear over and over, but some things that I don't hear as much. And I noticed this in my own body, uh, eat a big breakfast, optimize for breakfast. It's easy to skip breakfast, especially for those of us who kind of, I wake up kind of groggy. I'm not that hungry. You can eat a little bit later, but that window between especially, well, 10 and two, especially always eat a lot then because if you haven't eaten all day and you go to a holiday party, that's a recipe for disaster. The right. more satiate, <laughs> Karen, if you're listening on Spotify, Karen rolled her eyes. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah. So the more we can get the, the nutrients, the superfoods, you know, get some blueberries, protein things, um, it's harder to digest in the evening. And of course, that's when we often have holiday parties. Sometimes at work, they're, they're earlier. So Another tip would be, you know, if you're going to like a work holiday party that's in the middle of the day, just eat, you know, have, enjoy yourself, eat all the sweets, eat, eat all those things. If it's before two, especially because your body's going to be able to handle that, um, you know, kind of different <laughs> food that's not as, not the super foods, the holiday foods, the sweet treats and things like that. Your body is much better at digesting. And then I would say eat earlier in the day. And if you know you're going to be really tempted, um, eat a light meal before you go. Then you can just, you know, give yourself like, oh, I'll have like one of these and one of that. You're not likely to kind of binge. So that's my biggest tip. Make sure you're eating nutrient dense foods 
and eat them earlier. And then you're not going to be, the cravings are going to, you're going to decrease cravings. And I, oh, I have one supplement thing that I love um, that I've been doing a lot this year. And that is chlorella. You can get, get little chlorella, teeny little tablets on Amazon. There's a lot of people selling it and different price ranges, but chlorella is really good. If you like to have, I don't drink that much. And unfortunately the problem with like, I like to have a nice glass of wine or maybe two glasses of wine, if it's a big party yeah. or alcohol, hard alcohol is hard for me. So if, especially if I drink a, you know, holiday cocktail. Now I know some, some people are laughing, like I have five holiday cocktails. It doesn't matter. However, your body will kind of attenuate to that. Right. The reason I'm telling you, I don't drink that much, not to like brag or anything, but that means I get more, uh, inebriated with less. <laughs> I yeah. totally understand that. Right. Absolutely. I've had my days when yeah. I could I can party down, yeah. but those days are sadly over. But if you take some of these chlorella tablets, there's also some liquid form. It really absorbs. Chlorella is an algae and it absorbs the alcohol. I've been experimenting with this lately. And I notice like I wake up with nothing. I sleep well. Cause that's another thing for me. Sometimes I'm so sensitive. I'll have one glass of wine. Anyway, fill in the blank for you because some people have a higher tolerance. Uh, so, and it does disrupt your sleep and it does often give you, you know, whatever your hangover symptoms, but try chlorella as a remedy. Uh, after you drink, just take a bunch of the tablets. You can take, you know, I'd say up to 30, they make your hands and your, your teeth, teeth green. <laughs> you can actually <laughs> chew them. So if you're planning on uh, seeing anyone or kissing anyone, you might <laughs> just kind of swallow them. Got it. And you know, what, what we're also telling people is that in moderation, and that's every day, okay, if we are careful what we eat. Um, yesterday, I baked butter cookies because they're my husband's favorite. But I don't bake with sugar anymore. I, I bake with either stevia or monk fruit. And so I know that the cookie is not going to it's not, I don't crave more than one because of the stevia and the monk fruit. And so my comment is, if you're a baker, you may want to look into that because even my husband who has a sweet tooth, um, you know, he saw the box last night of cookies and normally he would have gone through half of them and there were 40 cookies in there and he had two and he was satisfied. And so you know, it's, it's training yourself too. I mean, it's easy to go to a party and just ah, the brownies and the cookies and the alcohol and everything else. And then at the end of the day, you're wondering why you just don't feel so good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you touched on sleep and that's another thing that we tend to have less of during the holiday times, whether it's we're preparing for um, having our own party or we're going to parties or we're working longer hours because we're going to be, our business is going to be closed. So how do we amount for that? Because if I remember, and I think it's in your book where you talk about that, you, if you sleep an extra 12 hours today, you're really not making up for the sleep that you lost during the week. Yeah, it's really important to keep a schedule. I think that's what you're referring to. Right. I mean, you can kind of make up sleep, but then the problem with that is your circadian rhythm is thrown off. A better choice would be, you know, because what we tend to do a lot is maybe push, push, push during the week or whenever your week is, because some people work during the weekends. And, and then we're adding on a lot of extra activities, socializing, parties, maybe uh, like you're saying, doing things to prepare that take extra push. So a better choice rather than spending one day, 12 hours sleeping, and especially if that means sleeping in really late, it's better to just wake up at the same time every day, go to bed earlier and I know for me, that's a hard one because I like to, I mean, I don't like to, but I just have a habit of like, oh, I can just do one more thing. Right. Yep. <laughs> and you feel your body sort of like, oh, like, I mean, that happened last night. I 
didn't get, I had a few nights last week when I didn't get proper sleep and I was really tired last night. And I was like, I did, I did get to sleep on time and I, but I could have gone to bed even a little earlier and that's going to be um, better for your circadian rhythms for your biological clock. So try to get up at the same time every day and just try to get those rhythms because your body also sleeps in cycles too. You know, when we oversleep, sometimes we, you know, we just mess up all the cycles of sleep right. because yep. it's kind of like a shift. You know, if you want to think about like, we're cleaning out our brain, we're cleaning out our organs. And if we, uh, you know, like think of a cleaning crew coming in the middle of the night, to clean, you know, we're sort of interrupting the shift and they're half done or something like that. So the more you can get on that schedule, and that's not always easy. That's where sometimes it's helpful to hire a coach. I help coach sleep, people in sleep. And I know you're a coach just to really nail down the nitty gritty. I'm also working as a coach in my day job. And it's amazing how much a coach can help you in simple things, because these are things that it sounds really easy on paper. Oh, get up at the same time every day. But as coaches, we know that those things can be super challenging. You really need somebody to kind of hold your hand because it's going to bring up emotions. It's going to bring up, um, you know, old habits, old patterns. We have ways of doing things. But the more we can connect to our, our biology, like our biology is ancient. The way that we live now with uh, electricity, I'm looking up, there's a light on, even though it's, yep. it's daytime, just because I'm on a computer, I want a little more light. And we, we've we overridden a lot of our, our biological si signals and we're kind of used to that. So I hope right. that made sense, but coaches can really help. Well, you know, and even as a coach, I work with two other coaches, um, meaning that when I need that help to get through whatever that situation is, I know who to call. I know who to, you know, they don't tell me what to do, but what they do is they encourage me to think about what is it that I really need to do? Why am I stuck thinking that I can't do it alone? And it's because sometimes we just want that reassurance that we can do it. Um, for the last eight months, I've been getting up at 4.30 in the morning because my husband has to, okay? And I know many wives will say, let him get up, you sleep, you know, but that's not my personality. But because we're getting up at 4.30 in the morning, my day starts early, but by eight o'clock at night, I'm spent. I really, really am. And I used to be a night owl. And so my rhythm has changed, but on the weekends when he doesn't have to get up at 4.30, my body is starting to wake up like at 5.30, okay? He starts waking up around 6.30 and we're basically staying on the same schedule. And I must say it's helped us keep our weight down and it has kept, kept us, you know, from less stress and tension. So you know, there is something to that sleep pattern. So, you know, here we are trying to age um, in a super way. And I think if people think about it, they must think, oh, you know, like we're doing all these extra things. But we're really not. We're living life. So can you explain to me when you talk about, um, you know, the supplements that sort of help us, you know, what is it about a supplement? Why isn't that we're not eating those natural foods rather than taking the supplements? Yeah, well, I do have a little bit about supplements and how to super age, but my, uh, my philosophy is use, you know, plant-based supplements, things that are you can find in nature, like the chlorella, things like uh, spirulina. Um, a lot of the, you know, I do take supplements, but a lot of them are food based. Like they're literally from foods, just kind of concentrated. There's things like, I know that I hear a lot of commercials about, I don't take this, but um, you know, beet powder made from beets and things like that. So those are the supplements that I like to use 
and they're often less expensive and there's ways to take them like in smoothies and things like that, uh, where you don't need to, you know, it's not always a pill, for example, but you know, you don't have to go crazy, but I think a, a few things that are really targeted to your needs are helpful. And the one example I gave was like chlorella, especially if you had, if you overindulge, because it will really absorb a lot of those toxins. And that's another thing. Our environments are really, I mean, the U.S. has a lot of chemicals, shall we, shall we say? So something like chlorella can be really helpful. Oh, here's a great, this isn't necessarily a supplement, but something that will really help you clear out toxins is, and if you like it, some people don't like this herb, but cilantro is really like a superfood herb, a lot of herbs too. I'd say if you don't like pills, buy and consume a lot of herbs because herbs are superfoods. You know, we think superfoods have to be something exotic, like some weird fruit that we never heard of and it's grown thousands of miles away. But no, superfoods are things like parsley, like eat your garnish. I think I have that in the book. Too. Cilantro. You know, it's interesting. My son, um, he had emergency gallbladder surgery last spring and his eating habits, he had, to, he had to change. And the doctor was talking to him recently about eating cleaner. And he called me up and he goes, oh, this is just going to cost me so much more money. And I said, you know, really? It's not because since I've changed my diet to eat cleaner, I'm finding there are so many fruits and vegetables out there that I thought I didn't like, and now I tried them, you know, tried them in small little increments and found ways to put them into my cooking. So if it's not really something that I really, really like, I can sort of disguise it, but get the nutrients from it. And so, you know, anything that comes from the earth, you know, basically is good for us, except for the point that you brought it before, all the chemicals that we use here in the United States. So, um, you know, you gotta be careful along those lines as well. So we talked about drinking, we talked about eating, we talked about sleeping, but there's so much more in your book. So give, give our listeners a hint of maybe a chapter in the book that might relate to just feeling good. I yeah. know you talk about that a lot. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk a little bit about, I think, mindset and maybe purpose, but mindset is really important. And uh, one thing that you, you talked about appreciation, something as simple as writing three gratitudes a day, it's very, that's a very powerful practice that gets you to focus on the positive rather than just the negative, what you don't like, what you want to change. And even how sometimes we start to think at this time of year, like what are, what are my resolutions or what am I going to change? And we start to focus on the negative, but we don't always focus on gratitude. And we sometimes see things as the glass half empty rather than the glass half full. Mm -hmm. And I have the chapter uh, seeing the world through mindful rose colored glasses. And what that means is being present and seeing the positive because rose colored glasses, we're looking at the wonders in the world. Another way to do that could be just taking a walk in nature and just looking and appreciating the beauty, um, seeing things in your neighborhood, looking at people that you love and appreciating qualities about them because sometimes we can get, they can get on our nerves, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> They're driving us crazy, but can we step back and really appreciate the uh, person in front of us that might be triggering us? <laughs> can we step back? Because that's always a thing. And there's a new book out by someone named um, Elaine Langer, who I mentioned in the book. She's a really fabulous re researcher. And she researches positive mindset. She also did the aging backwards study, which is all about, uh, a, she took a group of men and this was a lot, the stu study was a long time ago in the eighties, I believe. She took a group of men in the 1980s and 
at this time, it was a lot harder to manipulate <laughs> things like you. Now we have a lot more technology that could help, but she made it like they were living in the 1950s and she told them to pretend, you know, you're 30 years younger, just don't even think about who you are now. And she took them on a weekend retreat, quote unquote, and she had a control group and she put the music, she did all the things. So they thought they were, you know, imagine they were 30 years younger. And then she measured biological, you know, their, their um, gait, like how they walked, their aerobic capacity, their uh, grip strength and heart rate and things like that. And they had actually become younger <laughs> just by imagining they were younger. So our mindset is so powerful. And her book right now, I think it's called, I can't remember what it's called. It's something with mindful, Elaine Langer, L-A-N-G-E-R. That's a fantastic book. Listen to my book, listen to her book. She's a, a Harvard researcher and she's got so much on mindset that really makes you just realize like, I can't, I, I don't want to think negatively anymore well, and how to turn around things. She really turns things around. You know, mindfulness, even though it's a word that gets thrown around a lot, really is important. Um, I had been working with a client who, it's just a couple of years older than I am. Um, but something happened in her life a couple of years ago. She feels responsible for the negativity that it caused and she can't let go. And she is a very unhappy person. And the thing that I've told her is we all have unhappy things that have happened in our lives and we all could carry them on our back and not see the positives. Uh, but there is something positive in everybody's day. And I've seen this with even people who are in hospice. They may wake up in the morning and feel like, oh, I'm still here and I'm hurting. But there is some point almost in every day if you talk to a hospice nurse that they they see some beauty, okay? Whether it's remembering their past, somebody who's coming to visit them, the sun coming through their window. And that's what I started doing a number of years ago is finding that one thing every day. Now, if I find a hundred things, that's a great, great day. But I don't look for a hundred. I look for the one. And, you know, I could be having, you know, arguments with my husband and all of a sudden I'll stop and go what do I have to be thankful for wow we're here we're together we're both healthy and all of a sudden those arguments seem to dwindle so being mindful of who you are and what is it you want and that's what you said purpose so talk to us a little bit about purpose because I know your purpose has changed a little bit in the last year or so yeah. Well, purpose, I think it's something very deep and it's always unfolding, possibly like a flower that's blooming. Uh, my purpose has changed. I'm like, has it changed? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm doing different things, but right. um, yeah. So the more we know our purpose and sometimes I like to use the word ikigai because ikigai is a Japanese word, which is, uh, you know, your reason for a living. And that can change. We can find maybe also new ways to express our purpose. I feel like that's more what I'm doing now. I'm doing some different coaching. I'm working with uh, adults with disabilities and coaching them in their jobs. So it's it's just a different expression of my purpose, I feel, because I love helping people. I love coaching people and, and helping them with positive mindset and skills. So our our purpose and our ikigai can shift during life. And one example I have in the book of um, a woman who lives in Japan, she's 101 years old and her ikigai is she stands, she gets up every morning. And by the way, a lot of super agers got up really early, like 4.30. <laughs> <laughs> my, my professor <laughs> studied a lot of super agers and centenarians in India. And a lot of them are waking up very, very early and um, enjoying the day, taking walks. 
And that could be your purpose just to enjoy, you know, enjoy your life. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be for other people too. But this lady, she gets up every morning before school and, and she waves and greets all the children going to school. Yeah. And you can imagine, um, you know, I know as a parent, uh, taking my son to school was always very, it's challenging because you got yourself to take care of. You've got a, a younger one, even when they're teenagers, uh, carpooling or something like that. And so if I saw a lady waving every day, that would just like, again, it would shift my mindset every day to see, uh, that, that spirit, that energy. So it may be just uplifting people with something as simple as a wave or a hello. It doesn't have to be change the world kind of I'm doing air quotes purpose. So at the beginning, you talked about this time of year. A lot of us want to give things to people. And some of us don't have a uh, bank account that can really afford to give gifts. But even the gift of just friendship, of kindness, you know, we're so used to something physical in our hands, but even that physical thing, you know, I was thinking about it the other day that my husband every year used to give me a bottle of cologne. And when the bottle got empty, usually in the middle of the year, I didn't go out and buy another one and he didn't buy me one, but I would see that sitting there thinking, Oh, is that all I got? Because now it's empty. But now we don't really give gifts to each other, but it's a day where we spend together and we hold each other's hands maybe a few minutes more than any other day. So let's talk about, you know, what we can do that really is going to break our, break our budgets. Well, I love that example, just holding someone's hand a little bit longer <laughs> during that day, slowing down. Uh, call loved ones. Phone calls can be priceless, especially if you're not close by. Um, just uh, there's there's a book. I th- I think we had her on the show, Sherry. Um, the yeah, Sherry. Yes, I Bal- know you're talking about oh, her right. last name, Blue. I can't f- pronounce her. Yeah, it's all. She has a, a a book all about how to express um, your gratitude and your tell people it's like, say it now. It's all about telling someone you love them, but not just like, I love you, but like what you appreciate about them. It's a fantastic book with a lot of exercises. You know, you can pick that up and then write, doesn't even have to be a card. And then you could even read it. If you don't have money for a stamp, you could call someone and read, you could use someone else's phone. If you don't have a phone, um, I think, there's so many ways that are really free or no cost or low cost. So something like that, expressing gratitude, maybe ask someone, especially if you're feeling like you want to help somebody, that, someone that needs help. There's a lot of older adults uh, as a gerontologist, somebody who studies aging, uh, there's really a shortage of caregivers and sometimes a person that is shut in at home, just need someone to help them a little bit extra, or maybe take them on a walk. So you could kind of volunteer to help somebody help um, a person that maybe they're getting some caregiving, but they don't have, you know, usually, and even then like caregivers, sometimes they call in sick or um, there's a real shortage out there. And that's something I'm, I'm working on in my daily life. <laughs> we have, we have an issue with not having enough people, but having so many people that are in need of something simple, like someone to take them on a walk, cook a meal. So ask, you know, ask, what do you need? It may not, it sometimes it, they don't need anything that costs money material. They need your, your able hands and body <laughs> to you know. assist. I remember when my youngest son was, I think, probably in elementary school, um, they made coupons that they gave their parents. Um, Now, one was, you know, for a hug, but there were others in there, things that I necessarily wouldn't have thought about asking my son to do at the time. And one was help take the dishes out of the dishwasher. And as you were talking, I'm thinking, 
you know, there are a lot of people, if you ask them what they need, they're going to tell you nothing. And I'm sure your mother probably even says that to you. No, I don't need anything. But if you make up a coupon book that says, you know, redeem this for um, me to watch a TV program with you, uh, for me to, uh, you know, take your cleaning to the laundry or whatever, come up with things that you know that this person may have some difficulty doing. And they're not going to ask you, but you give them this coupon book and they'll redeem those coupons. Um, and I know I did with my son and he was, a couple of times he was shocked. It would be like, really, I have to do that? And say, but you gave me the coupon, you know? Um, but I know as I'm getting older and people ask me what I want, I typically say the same thing. I don't need anything. But there are times that I might need a ride someplace because I, you know, I just can't get there on my own for whatever reason, or I'm not feeling well and I need something from the pharmacy. You know, giving out those coupons, people then know what they can do for you in the future. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. I love it. And my son gave me those coupons too, and I saved them. I don't remember exactly what they were for. I think there was one for a hug and then there was some other like do a chore. Yeah. And that's a really great idea, especially older adults. Sometimes they don't really need anything. Sometimes they do need something, but often, you know, just yeah, a coupon is is a great idea because then I think there's a sort of you know, I know with my mom, she doesn't want to burden anyone. There's a lot of people that don't want to quote unquote burden anyone, but a coupon kind of lifts that burden, so to speak. It, exactly. My mother-in-law used to use that term all the time. You know, when we would go do something for her, oh, I don't want to be a burden. It's like, but we wouldn't ask if you were. And she would say, no, you would. And we'd be like, well, then, you know, we need to figure out how we can do these things for you. And we just started sort of like incorporating her into things without even asking her. Um, but my boys know that I'm very difficult. And if you ask me if I need help with something, my answer always is no, even if I'm falling off the ladder. So, um, you know, we can do those nice things. So can you tell our listeners what made you write super ager. Um, yeah, well, I have written a few books and my publisher came to me and said, we need a book. Literally, it wasn't my idea. Quite honestly, we need a book and it's going to be about super agers. And I was like, what the heck is a super ager? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was really intrigued and I was I thought to myself, I don't know what the super ager is, but I want to be one. I knew right away intuitively it was something exciting and new. And I wanted to find out how to be a super ager. So that's how I started writing the book. And I want to say that a lot of people kept asking me, what is a super ager? And now I think it's really gotten much more mainstream because last month there's a new one out, but I get the AARP bulletin mm -hmm. and in, I guess it was in November because I already got December. November was all about super agers and it was yes. on the front page. Yeah. <laughs> super agers, you know, different examples of super agers. So that's what I did, but it was, it was before that. And, um, you know, sometimes super, there are researchers, diff, some university researchers that are doing research on super agers, cognitive you know, who have really high cognitive function, but then the term has, has really, it's a broad definition. I don't think I have my own definition. It's just doing it to me. The definition is do optimizing who you are at any age, really, but especially yeah. after 50, over 50, because this is a time when we have so many more living older adults and the percentage of the pos excuse me, the percentage of the population has skyrocketed. So we, you know, just that alone is going to give us more potential to see how many different ways there are to age. Absolutely. And, you know, you've had a number of guests on in the past who are 
they're in their 70s, 80s, okay, who are still living full, productive lives, even though there are some people on the outside going, oh, you're too old to do that. No, if you're, if it's something you want to do and you're capable of doing it, and most of us have those capabilities, but I find that <clears throat> too often we get to a certain age and we've allowed society to say, okay, go sit in that chair, you know, and relax. Well, you know what? Um, if I don't need to relax right now, I'm going to go for that walk or I'm going to go take a job. Um, you know, I have a part-time job that I do. I call on uh, a number of hospitals in the area. And I had a doctor say to me, why are you doing this at your age? And I looked at him and I said, well, do you know how old I am? And he goes, well, you got to be in your 50s. And I said, well, I'm going to give you a big, huge hug. I'm in my 70s and I'm able to do it. And I like what I'm doing. And so to me, that's what a super ager is. You don't give up because somebody has a preconceived notion. And and really, actually, to be honest, paid employment is a, um, no, I'm, I'm losing the, um, what is that word? It's a, it, I can't think of the word, but there's a word for it with it in public health. It's going to come to me. It's a, um, you know, it's a, a marker. We don't need to use the correct terms because you guys aren't gerontologists, yeah. but it's going to increase your um, life expectancy. It's one of those things. It's a marker, you know, like doing that. Not, and you don't have to have a paid job, but it's one of those things where if you compare uh, paid employment, it, it just helps you. And I see that right now I'm a job coach and I see that with my clients because they are just loving what they do, being productive, being out there. We don't realize how much jobs, um, you know, so, I mean, we can be entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial life is great. And I think both of us have jobs and work as entrepreneurs. They're both fun. They're both great. They keep you out there. Social, like the social aspects of working right. are really overlooked. Yeah. And there was one more thing I just wanted to highlight. I know we're getting towards the end of the show, but um, something you said, oh, I know what I wanted to say. If I had money for, <laughs> I don't know, if everybody gave me $1,000, every time they said, I'm old, I'm too old, everybody don't say that. Don't say I'm old or I'm too old. Because usually what you're saying is, I, I it's like a negative thing. Because it it is it is not from your perception. It's like, yes, our bodies are going to slow down. But when you say, I'm old, I can't do this, that is like piling poop on top of it. Honestly, <laughs> I totally it's, agree. I totally. Yes. But like people say it to me all the time. And I'm like, I've really been thinking about it. So if somebody asks me, cause sometimes people will say, Oh, should I not say that? And I'm going to say, say I'm old school. Never say I'm old. I'm old school. Cause old school to me is like, I got a lot of experience. Right? <laughs> I'm old school. I, I like, oh, I'm old school. Cause I like some songs that are from my youth and, or whatever you want to fill in the blank, but old school to me, that's just my new phrase, you know, take it or live okay. it. You can make up your own, but old school. I, I think it has a different connotation. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like old Absolutely. school. I'm old school. I have like some tradition in me lived a while, been around the block, but I'm not saying I'm old. I'm old school. Exactly. exactly. And let me tell you, I had my father's cousin lived in 99. Carl Reiner just lived to 101. And he was active up until the last week of his life. So, and my cousin was, my father's cousin was the same way. He had lunch with my cousins that day. And that night when he went to bed, he just didn't wake up in the morning. And so, I look at I look at people like them. They didn't let the world stop them. They kept going. And my father's cousin exercised with the coach five days a week. So wow. you know what? Um, we do the best that we can. Um, you know, maybe we can't afford a coach. You know, to work out with. But there are so many different things that we can work our body out with. Eat properly still enjoy the holidays because we can 
and um, get into the next year. So, yeah. I'm oh, forward to this. Yeah, I have one more story to close out the show. And I want to kind of dedicate, maybe I'll just even dedicate this show to this friend who actually passed this year. And I don't know her exact age. She was around my mom's age, 92 or 93. And I'm really sad. She was so busy. I could never get her on the show. Her name is Betty Ann Bruno. And she wrote a bio or her, her um, autobiography. She was a writer as well. She was a hula dancer. She was originally born in Hawaii. She was a news um, person or a newscaster, uh, an anchor in the Bay Area where I live. And a few months ago, she was hula dancing with her hula dance group. And then she just felt sick and she, her husband took her to the hospital and unfortunately she passed away. But just like you said, she was literally dancing until, you know, like a few hours before she died. And I, I'm, she was just an incredible spirit. I know she's listening and watching and maybe we can do a little, uh, review of her book and talk about her and some other super agers on a show because oh and she, her other thing that she did was she was in the original cast of the wizard of oz she wasn't um she was a child actor because they had um smaller people and then they had child actors in the wizard of oz so interesting yeah. wow yeah what a life absolutely and you know to be doing something that you love you know minutes hours before you pass i think that's what all of us sort of wish for so let's get off of our funds and let's you know let's live let's live to the best possibilities that we all have so with that thank you for a look at how we can enjoy the holidays and you'll be back in january and uh I'm glad that you're back with New Cleveland Radio because we all need to know how to super age. Thank you. Get on that dance floor at the party. That sounds good. Have a great day, Elise. Bye-bye now. Thank you.